human beings have accomplished incredible feats, like climbing Mount Everest, circumnavigating the globe, and swimming the English Channel. Again and again, humans have shown their remarkable physicality and will. However, there are two places humans have no business being, the depths of the ocean and the dark void of space. As we've seen through the tragedy of the Titan submersible, being 2.5 miles at the bottom of the ocean results in instantaneous implosion due to the immense pressure. By contrast, space is void of any pressure at all, as it's a perfect vacuum. In this video, I'll discuss what happens when the human body is subjected to such a vacuum. This is the dark science of your body in space. Space is a perfect vacuum because it's void of an atmosphere. But what is a vacuum? A vacuum is an environment where there is less atmosphere than the atmosphere measured on Earth at sea level. Atmosphere is a scientific way of saying gases in the air. The air around you contains trillions of gas molecules such as nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and argon. Gravity pulls these molecules down which produces a pressure on objects, known as atmospheric pressure. The force this pressure produces at sea level is 14.7 pounds per square inch. You can think of atmospheric pressure being similar to water pressure in the ocean. At the bottom of the ocean, there is very high pressure due to the height and weight of water molecules pushing down. As you ascend from the bottom, there is less water pushing down on you, and therefore, lower pressure. When you're finally above water, the water pressure is zero. Likewise, when you're ascending in the atmosphere, there is less atmospheric gases pushing down on you, decreasing the pressure. Once you're in space, above Earth's atmosphere, there are no gases, so there is zero atmospheric pressure, which is a vacuum. This absence of gases in a vacuum can be seen by dropping a bowling ball and a feather at the same time. Normally, gases in the atmosphere causes drag on objects, especially on a feather, which impedes the rate at which it falls. When gas molecules are removed, there's nothing to cause drag on the feather, and so it falls at the same speed as the bowling ball. If there is any air retained in the vacuum, it will expand, and liquids will boil due to the absence of atmospheric pressure. We can see this occur in a man-made vacuum chamber using a balloon. Once atmospheric pressure is reduced, air in the balloon will expand due to lack of pressure. If water is placed in the vacuum chamber, it will boil, as there is no pressure holding down the molecules in a liquid state. The behavior of gases and liquids in a vacuum is important because the human body also has gases and liquids. Much of what happens to the air in a balloon and a cup of water in a vacuum is what happens to your body. For example, there are gases in your lungs, stomach, and intestines. The body itself is 60% water, not to mention there is water in your mucus, saliva, and blood. All of these gases and liquids are held under pressure on Earth, but in the perfect vacuum of space, they're not. The moment you enter space without a spacesuit, you immediately begin to suffocate. There is no atmosphere or oxygen in space, so you have nothing to breathe in. Any air remaining in your lungs will instantly expand rushing out of your body while also rupturing alveoli and lung tissue. Hollow organs that contain air, like your stomach and intestines, will be stretched and possibly tear apart. Any fluids or solids you have in your stomach and intestines will be forcefully excreted due to expanding gases. Within 10 to 15 seconds of being in space, you will lose consciousness from oxygen deprivation, which is actually good because everything else happening from here on out will be horrific. Water in orifices like saliva in your mouth or mucus in your eyes and nose will evaporate, causing it to dry out. When liquid evaporates, it also removes heat from the surface, causing ice to form on your eyes, nose, and mouth. With the human body being 60% water, there is a considerable amount of water in your soft tissues and organs. This water in your organs evaporates into gaseous water vapor, causing your skin and organs to expand. It's a common misconception that your blood will boil in space. Your blood vessels retain enough internal pressure to prevent evaporation of blood. Instead, your blood vessels will rupture from expansion of oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide in your blood. Smaller vessels, like capillaries and arterioles, will burst first, before larger resilient arteries and veins do. Within two to three minutes of being in space, you will be officially deceased, as your brain would have been deprived of oxygen long enough for it to shut down. Fortunately, you lost consciousness in the first 10 to 15 seconds. At this point, your abdomen would be inflated like a balloon, and your skin would be swelling, as evaporation of liquids causes a buildup of pressure. 
Though blood vessels and organs are rupturing and tearing inside your body, your skin may still be elastic enough to avoid rupturing. However, space is extremely cold, with an average temperature of negative 454 degrees Fahrenheit. Due to the perfect vacuum of space, your body would not immediately freeze, similar to how the coffee in your vacuum sealed tumbler takes a very long time to get cold. Eventually though, your body will begin to freeze and crystallize, making your skin inelastic and brittle. At this point, your skin will rupture from internal pressure, causing all the gases to rush out of your body. As a result, you will be a frozen, torn up, dried out husk floating around in space. Since there is no oxygen to cause oxidation or bacteria to begin decomposition, you will float around in space intact for millions of years. Much of what we know that happens to the body in space is from experiments that NASA conducted on animals in the 1960s. In one experiment in 1965, NASA observed the physiological effects a vacuum had on dogs. Dogs were placed in a vacuum chamber where atmospheric pressure was reduced from 14.7 psi to 0.038 psi. Within 10 seconds of the pressure change, the dogs lost consciousness. Soon after, their bodies began to inflate, as one researcher noted, like inflated goatskin bags, and forcefully excreted feces and vomit. After two minutes under vacuum conditions, most of the dogs had succumbed to the vacuum environment. When the chamber was repressurized, the dog's bodies deflated back to normal. Upon inspection, ice crystals were found in and around the dog's mouths from evaporation of saliva and mucus. Though the dogs were subjected to vacuum conditions, the vacuum was nowhere near the vacuum of space. The pressure in the vacuum chamber was reduced to 0.038 psi, whereas the pressure in space is 1.9 times 10 to the power of negative 15 psi or over a trillion times lower. As for humans, to date there have only been two events where human beings were exposed to a vacuum. The first occurred in 1966. NASA engineer Jim LeBlanc was testing a spacesuit in a vacuum chamber, when suddenly the hose pressurizing his suit became detached. LeBlanc maintained consciousness for only 10 seconds before passing out. Fortunately, a test subject in an adjacent chamber was able to pull him to safety. Jim LeBlanc was the first human being in history ever to be exposed to a vacuum, and was in the chamber for 30 seconds. When asked about the sensation of being exposed to a vacuum, the last thing LeBlanc recalled before passing out was the saliva evaporating off his tongue. The second incident of vacuum exposure had a tragic ending. In 1971, three Soviet cosmonauts, Commander Georgi Dabrovolsky, Flight Engineer Vladislav Volkov, and Research Engineer Viktor Patsev manned a flight to the Soviet space station Salyut 1. The crew docked at the space station for 22 days, from June 7th to June 29th, 1971. On June 30th, the crew departed to return to Earth. When the descent module detached from the service module, two explosive bolts were supposed to fire sequentially, but instead fired at the same time. The force of the simultaneous explosion loosened a valve that controlled internal cabin pressure. Later in the descent, this valve had opened at 104 miles in the thermosphere, causing the cabin to depressurize, reducing the pressure down to zero. Biomedical sensors on one crew member showed cardiac arrest had occurred within 40 seconds of cabin depressurization. The automatic flight system landed the capsule 55 miles southwest of Karazal, Kazakhstan. 25 minutes after depressurization. Upon inspection, all three crew members were found deceased. The cause of death was asphyxiation. Autopsies revealed internal bleeding from organ expansion and ruptured blood vessels. It was estimated the crew was conscious for no more than 40 seconds after depressurization. To date, the Soyuz 11 space mission is the only incident where humans have died in space. In summary, if you're ever exposed to the cold, dark vacuum of space, you will immediately start to suffocate due to absence of oxygen. Any air in your lungs will expand rapidly as lung tissue is torn apart and rushes out of your body. Other organs containing air, such as your stomach and intestines, will painfully expand as you forcefully vomit and excrete fluids from your stomach and intestines. Your eyes, nose, and mouth will dry out and crystallize from evaporation of water. After 10 seconds of being in space, you will lose consciousness from hypoxia. Your skin and internal organs will start to swell and expand, causing organ rupturing. Your abdomen will resemble a balloon. Blood vessels will rupture from expansion of gases in your blood. 
any blood released from organ and vessel rupturing will also become a gas, adding to the internal pressure and ballooning of your body. Your body will begin to freeze very slowly from the frigid vacuum temperatures. If your skin hasn't ruptured yet, it will after it becomes cold and brittle, thereby releasing all of your internal gases. Finally, your body will become a stretched out, deflated, dried out husk that will float around in space, intact for literally millions of years. Sometimes science can be seen as difficult, foreign, and even boring. Yet, there are times when science grabs our attention and draws us in, yearning for more answers. Often, what draws us in are topics that are dark, macabre, or terrifying. It's with the intention of this video that you too were drawn in and sought to have your questions answered. Thanks for watching Dark Science.